and welcome back to another episode of the Knee Slap and K-Pop Podcast. I'm Sammy. I'm here with Kayla. Hello. And we're going to do sort of a companion to last episode, in a way. Uh-huh. In a way. Where this is sort of a trend we've noticed. Yes. And we want to just talk about it. Right, because it's a in, getting... It's, it's an increasingly co- like increasingly popular trend in recent days too, which is the thing. It's like so, it's been happening for a while, and then this year it like really exploded. exploded. Yeah, yeah. So this is the K-pop to BL pipeline. Mm-hmm. I called it a trending career path because it, it is, is. It is. It's also it's, something that is going in reverse as well. It's it's all of the above. It's yep. going in backwards, forwards, inside, outside. Who's to say? But. It's happening. I don't know what it means, but it's a thing that's happening in K-pop. It's a trend, and I think that we should analyze trends to figure out why they're happening. So, Sure. Here we are. So, I watch a decent amount of dramas. I do watch BLs. I have for a few years now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's a lot. So. Yes. Let's begin. What is BL? I think it's... We we gotta get our terms straight. Right. So BL is short for boys love. It started as an anime term and as sort of a Japanese term for all of that. First, a media that portrays relationships between two men. Yes. Very simple. Gay. Gay. Very, very simple gay. explanation, really. Very simple. Gay it's romance. There you go. Yes. There we go. So, and I feel like you tell me five years ago that the trending career path of a K-pop idol will be possibly doing a BL pre or post- uh, becoming a K-pop idol, I look at you like you're crazy. Right. And yet, here Wild. we are. So, there's like three paths you can take. And th- there's some deviation, but there's three main paths. So yes. what is the K-pop to BL pipeline? So either you start in the K-pop realm, you're a Nugu K-pop boy, mm-hmm. you're looking at your your Dong Kisses, your K and K's, your, your K's. underrated... You're down in the dumps. You could be more popular. Mm-hmm. Thus, you do a BL, and it is a drama that gains you popularity. Mm-hmm. Option two. You're an older K-pop idol. You're Vixes. You're B1A4s. We'll get to the specifics in a minute. And then you go on to the BL to either increase your popularity or continue your stay in the public eye. Now, one might say, isn't that any drama? You are correct any drama but it's very interesting that this is specifically constantly happening with bl dramas because yes. sure you can do any kind of like web drama but also at the same time that a lot of these capabilities have started doing these bl shows korean bl shows have been on the rise they weren't really a thing now there's dozens of them there's little eight episode vicky dramas every month i swear to god Mm-hmm. And then the 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 least common path is you are first a BL actor, and then you go on to specifically a K-pop survival show, mm-hmm. and you either win, rarely, mostly you do not win. That is sort of the least common path. Yep. All of these seem like the kind of path you take as re- any regular idol, I am aware. Right. But- with the stigmatization of the gay relationship in Korea generally, and sort of, like, also kind of in the K-pop industry, it is very interesting that this is becoming a tried and true thing. Yep. Because, um, before we get into it, I have 30-something examples. We're gonna go through each boy individually. There's over 40 boys. A lot. A lot of people have There's taken this a career lot of path. Boys. A lot of people. So, I'd like to begin with ga- one. Gay, but not in a gay way. So, yep. these are idols who have played a gay character, but not in a BL. Now, here's what I will say about this path. One, it is mostly older now. I don't feel like it's coming up as often. This is mostly Two, before this is where you- the, like, K-pop's BL pipeline really became a thing. Like, yeah. a lot of these are, like, from dramas from quite a while ago in comparison yes. to everything else. Also, this is where you get your bigger idol. Like, an, yes. an idol that actually has a name for themselves. Yes, yes. Because it's seen as subversive. And three, nine times out of ten, and I mean with basically every single one of these boys, you they tell you they're gay. Or it is implied through glances. There is and nothing 
explicitly shown they never kiss anybody. They never they they never even hold hands with anybody. It's it is more never of like a thir- forbidden romance type thing where it's very one sided. Is yes, the way it's portrayed it is, in a lot of shows. It is longing glances, yeah. not so much hand holding. Right. There's not even like hugs or like we're no. Nope. This, this is implication central. Let us begin with So and Gook. Probably the most tangentially related person I right, put on here, right. but I do think he is because maybe is he one a of K-pop the starting points. Idol, yes and no. He has but... K pop music. Yes. He is made music. Is he mainly an actor? Yes, we know. Yes, but he has also made K pop music and has been in one of the most prominent, like, gay music videos so one of the first examples of this probably the first example so uh k wills please don't spoiler alert plot twist it's gay if you've never seen it Mm -hmm. but it comes out in like 2013 2012 like it's old at this point and it's one of the earliest examples of this it is surprise gay yes it's like plot twist gay plot twist heartbreak gay Mm -hmm. so he is sort of the the nexus point i believe right then we move on to hoya from the group infinite who left the group infinite who is a soloist now yep who is god knows where doing god knows I what think dance crew things in a dance crew i guess yeah that's just what he's doing now he is in the show reply 1997 which is the first of the reply series and still the best of the reply series i will say that Mm -hmm. uh those shows get worse and worse every time reply 1988 is overrated trash fight me it's so boring why are those hours god it's so boring it's awful i'm almost done with it i just want it to be i have been on that last episode for like a week and i it's it's two hours long oh my god Sidetrack. Yeah. Apply 1997, the best one. And Hoya is a surprise gay in that. Mm-hmm. And that's what you'll find a lot of times with the with this first section, is that it's that sexuality is, is a minor plot point. Usually the that character, Hoya's character, is has an unrequited love with the main character, yeah. which is fun. Uh Fun for some, not fun for all, I would say. <laughs> I don't think Hoya was having much fun. No, it's really meant to, like, a lot of these things are, are used as, like, a plot twist type yes. situation a lot of the time. Or as, like, a, I don't want to say, like, a show of representation, like a, like a, oh, all of this, because Reply 1997 is sort of meant to be, like, an encapsulation of the whole reply series is meant to be an encapsulation of Korea at that specific time. Right, right. So, like, I do think that it's showing, like, changes in society and everything. But throughout that whole show, he has this unrequited crush on, funnily enough, So In Gook from the last slide. It's very funny because he is the main lead, main male lead in that. Yes, also involved in this as well. <laughs> also involved in this one. Very funny. Mm-hmm. But he's sort of, uh, it's a plot point. And then at the end, you he he's implied to have a boyfriend at the end of that show, but you don't even see him. Yep. <laughs> they can't even cast anybody. It's that kind. It is so like out of sight, out of mind situation that like they can't even cast a boyfriend for him. Right. Which is unfortunate. Uh, and that was also in 2012. So we're looking at really like 2012 being like the yes. beginning of this. Uh, then we have Takuya. From the boy group Cross Sheen. Uh, he played a gay character in the show The Lover. So uh, if you don't know what that show's about, that show is It's a like, really weird show. It's a very <laughs> weird show. It is very much a romantic comedy. But it's from like, let me get the year for that show. Because it's, it's, it's from 2015. So it is like before the real blow up of K-dramas. Yeah. So this show is very Korean, which means the humor is very Korean. And if you're not into that kind of humor, it's not funny. It's also very problem. much more about sex than most very K-dramas sex. ever are. Like, it is very much said. The whole show but is like, very much centered around but like sex. comedic sex. Yeah. It's still always comes down to the comedy. So it is about uh, four couple. The quote unquote couples. Three couples, three of them three are couples cu- and three then the couples two, and some roommates. And the two quote unquote roommates. Yeah. And roommates. 
Uh, so the three couples are like one of them is an older woman and a younger man. Younger man, questionable. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh huh. He's I here. I do not. Yeah, I do not recommend watching this show because uh, uh, Jung Jun Young is in it, and he is mainly probably like the main character one of the main characters he's a main character and also behaving in a way that is like very yeah. on brand with like the crimes he will with later what you find be out accused so of. yeah so like it's him and the woman in his relationship like she's an older woman he's a younger man but also he is kind of a deadbeat he's like younger rock star who is like not really that successful and yeah. like uh, kind of uh, taking advantage of this older woman for like everything essentially so it's really kind of yeah. in retrospect it's really bad to watch it it's i weird. do not recommend i that. do not recommend watching him uh the other couple is like they've been together for years but never got married and then the the other uh, one are like newly married are like newly married but like have not like had a, like a very short relationship got married and now we're trying to figure out how to live together uh-huh and then you have what we're actually talking about which is takuya who is like a japanese foreign exchange student or like jap he's coming to live in korea uh-huh. and he lives with this guy and then they find out i don't ever think it's confirmed what takuya's sexuality is but the other guy like ha- it's mainly focused on the other guy who's lived in that apartment and, like, him figuring out, hey, maybe I'm gay and I'm just in love with this guy. But they never get together at any point. They kind of just, like, have feelings, but they can't be any There's, like, a lot of, it. like, weird, like, tension in that. It's there's like, a lot of it's tension really, there. Bu- yeah, there's, like, a lot of weird, like, sexual tension and that's all yeah. that you ever get out of it. And I do think that we are still at the point where they can't really show anything. Because if you even look at the poster, all the other couples are, like, at the very least touching, touching in some capacity. Touching each other. Taki is not even standing. Just sitting He's on the He's sitting ground. and the guy is above, like, a foot behind him and standing. Like, there's really no interaction on the poster, at least. All right, next. Next. We got, so this one's tangential. Insung of K&K is in the Bestie music video for Excuse Me, which is, yeah, another surprise gay at the end of that video. Uh-huh. That video, I think, is actually really good. It's a really good music video. It's a really good music It's a very fun video. Yes. So then we have Moonbin. Rest in peace. Uh, We love Moonbin. Yeah. He's from Astro, obviously, and he was in Moments at 18. His character, very similar to Hoya's character in Reply 1997. Like, like an almost identical lo- situation Almost happening. identical situation. Like, he's in love with the main character. Main character, like, it's more antagonistic because I do not believe So and Gook ever finds out in Reply 1997. I think Unji's character finds out and she kind of covers right, him right. about it. But they're, like, sort of both of the realization that So and Gook is not gay. <laughs> Right, right. And, like, I still want him to be my best friend and don't want it to be awkward, so I will never tell him anything. Uh-huh. Which, you know, is fine. This Fair. is slightly more antagonistic because I do think that there's, like, an implication that he knows and, like, dude kind of threatens him a little. It's weird. The main character in that show is not, uh, okay, not the main, ca- like, second male lead in this show, uh, is fa- is not a nice person. Because he's sort of a kind of also a creep. Ugh. The main care the 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 male lead that is not played by uh oh my god my brain is absolutely fried. Ong Sung Woo. Ong Sung Woo. I'm like Ong 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 <laughs> Ong Sung Woo. Main male lead not played by Ong Sung Woo. He is not in love. With- Moonbin is not in love with Ong Sung Woo in the show. But yeah, it's an identical situation. But this era is sort of when we're starting to get, like, actual gay, because that is actually implied much earlier in the show than the Reply series. Doesn't go anywhere, but it just comes in earlier. And now we get the big one. So Wang Yibo, uh-huh. member of Unique, yep, soloist, yep. love that. He's in The Untamed. The Untamed is the gayest show in China that hasn't actually gay. Yep. It's as gay as it can be in China. If legally they could have made a BL, this wouldn't be in this section. It would be in the next section. Right. But they can't. But they can't because it's China, so we got the Untamed in the like in the way that we got the Untamed. In the form that we received it, yes. 
Uh, very well done. Love this show. Highly recommend. I recommend most of these. I recommend this and Reply 1997 of the shows that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that is gay, but not in a gay way. Played by idols. And you'll see that this, we're going to like lower the caliber of idol a little bit. Right. Well, it's going to go down. Wait, where's my other one? Oh, there it is. So part two, gay in a gay way. So these are idols who have played a gay character in an actual BL. So all the other ones, those are not considered BLs because they are mainly focusing on straight couples. This is a BL. Yes. So we're going to start with people that were on survival shows because it's super common to super be on a survival now. show yep. and then go do a BL or have come from a BL. Yeah. So we're going to start with foreign idols. So this is Yacht. Yep. Yacht was on Boys Fantasy. Yacht left Boys Fantasy very quickly. Yep, because Yacht did not belong on Boys Fantasy. Because <laughs> Yacht is not a very good idol. Yacht had honest. no business being on Boys Fantasy. Um but that's Fair great enough. for him that he's not in Fantasy Boys, so. Yes. Yacht is a very uh, booked and busy BL actor. If you watch any Thai BLs, you've seen Yacht somewhere. So he was in Between Us, which is, like, really his first, like, he played gay in a BL. Like, he's done it before in, like, minor roles, but as, like, a main character. He's also in Love by Chance. I am aware that his character in Love by Chance gets into a relationship with a woman. I am aware of that. But one, Pond is an absolute, like, weirdly kind of misogynistic weirdo, but with a heart of gold. And it is as, my feelings on that character are as complicated as that sentence was. <laughs> Like, that's all that. And also, my it's feelings on that show are as complicated as that sentence was because that show is questionable. Oh boy. Questionable. There's like, uh, questionable. <laughs> I mean, any meme show is questionable. Also, very interesting because if you like follow logic out, every like so many BLs are in that same universe because that's the show. That is that then gets the spinoff of Tharn type, which gets the spinoff of Don't I Say see, No, which okay. gets the spinoff of okay. Love in the Air. That's really a which big then, one, yeah. Which then gets the spinoff of Wedding Planner, which is like now we're spiraling. It's oh all boy. in the same universe oh if you think about it. Oh god. It's because these characters it's a lot. But go back to this. Yacht, very good as an actor, not a very good idol. Yes. Then we get like prolific actor here, Santa. Santa. Uh, who was also on Boys Fantasy, honestly, probably deserves to be in that group talent-wise, did not deserve to be in that group uh, because of my own personal feelings because on that, that group. group that is going to be, be awful. Terrible. Um, so I'm honestly very happy for him that he's not there. And can be more successful so um, hard. doing BLs. So Absolutely. Hooray. So he was in between us, not playing gay, but like that show is, look at this poster. It's gay. Uh, he was in Seven Project. And he's in My Only 12%, which is his, like, big, like, BL starring role so far. And I think he plays really well. He's He has a long future ahead of him. He's very young. Santa right now is only, like, 20 years old. So he's got a long career ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And I think that he works really well. He it, It's very common Thai thing where he's sort of been put in a... Uh, group constantly with earth who was his partner in both seven project and my only 12 percent and uh that's a very common thing to happen in thailand which is where like if you find t two actors that have very good chemistry they'll do multiple shows together which is fun but also you can branch it it's fine it, it can get a little stale i do i kind of want to see santa do something more because i think he can and i think he'd be really good at it mm-hmm so you do you, Santa. <laughs> uh, so now we get... Nine. Nine, who is also only tangentially related to K-pop. He's related because of us. He's so related to K-pop even less so than, like, Yacht and Santa. <laughs> He's related even yes than so and Gook, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, yep. Uh, so, uh, nine, uh, who I have no idea what audience this episode's gonna go. So either he's more well known from Two Moons Two <laughs> or from Into One. I don't know what audience is gonna get this video. I but, feel like uh, our our podcast audience is the overlapping of both of those. So <laughs> this is the place. maybe a yeah. both situation. <laughs> uh, so Chuang Twenty Twenty One, which is like season 
four four of official china produce which makes the group into one has still to this day the most international like final lineup of all time yep uh crazy even how that came out of china crazy how that came out of china but yeah, it has like it's very it's weirdly very diverse. It is, and we're talking like Thailand, Japan. Uh, I think there's like a, a kid that's like Chinese American in there too. Oh, and it's, like, yeah, because Mika, Mika I think is Japanese, Hawaiian, Japanese Hawaiian. But I think there's a Chinese American that's yeah. just being under Chinese. And then there's the the Thai. There's German. nine and not Thai and Patrick. Patrick who are Thai. Is- Patrick's also German or something though too. Yes, and then you have other Santa who's Japanese and yeah. also and uh another Rika, Japanese. Rikamaru is also Rika in Ma- there. Yes. Yeah. So like there's a it's very international. And nine both night uh so Patrick is from The Gifted Two, if anyone's seen that show, but he is from there, yes. And then nine was in Two Moons Two, which is like in the saga of two moons, which is one cast for season one, then remaking the same show for two moons two, and then having a third season, which is with a third completely different cast, yeah, playing the same characters, it is a complicated situation. I never even watched that third season. I might never get around to it. Uh-huh. But yes, he is here too. Uh, one of the only people that has, like, won one of these shows after being in a BL. It's, like, him and one other person. Alright, so now we get to people that have been in your classic Korean survival shows. Uh-huh. We're, uh, also, these people are in no particular order because I just sort of put people in places. They're gonna be here. They're around. So we have... Also, you're gonna see a lot of the same show because a lot of these people end up on the same show. So, uh, Lee Sion was on Produce 101 Season 2. He was number 73. He was he did not go far in that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was also on Mix 9. I do not know where he placed on that show. Who's to say? Uh, but he was in the show Light On Me, which I think is very good. Then we have uh, Choi, Ji- Choi Ji Hyun, who is from Boys 24, and he was in Peach of Time, which is kind of like a korean thai co-production because a bunch of the people in that show are also thai mm-hmm. i have that show is on my list to watch i haven't seen it yet <laughs> oh boy that's a little so, I, I i forgot that he was this, this is, early uh, yeah all, there's all of those kids also here <laughs> all right so someone you might actually remember <laughs> so yoon Subin was on produce x he was disqualified. He was the pro. Du- he was the JYP trainee. JYP trainee who got taken out for like um a co- a controversy bullying? of like I think multiple things. I think it was bullying, but also it was one of those that maybe had like underage smoking, smoking and drinking. And drinking. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Like, so after that, that type of situation, he goes on and does uh two BL kissable licks, kissable lips, and roommates of Pondok three hundred four. Uh, if you look at that you'll see a familiar uh, poster, face you'll see a familiar face. We will get to him. Give it a moment. <laughs> uh, so then we have Han Ji Chan, who was on Produce X also. He came in 57th place. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in Where Your Eyes Linger, which is very good. And he was in Oceans Like Me. If you look at the Oceans Like Me poster, you will also <laughs> might see a familiar face. Uh-huh. You yep. might know who this is. You might not. I don't know how famous he is. Because uh-huh. I know who he is, but... I can never gauge how famous he people are to, like, the general public. Right, right. Because, like, I know who he is. Right. But also, I've been doing this for, like, ten years. Uh-huh. All right. So then we have Han Sejin. Probably the kid that did the best on these shows other than the kids that won. So he was on Produce X. He came in 19th place. Pretty good. That's, like, finale place. That's finale level, I think. Because yeah. are there, like, 20? Didn't there used to be, like, 22 people on the finale? Um, yes, 22. 22 or 24? Yeah, 20, yeah, I don't remember if that was an 11 or 12 member group. I think it was 11, so it would have been 22, but either way, finale placing for him. Good for him! Uh, so he was in Mr. Heart, which I really liked, and then Nobleman Rue's Wedding, which I haven't seen. There's a lot of boys, people. There's a lot of we're boys. We're gonna go through a lot of people real fast here. All right. So we're still in. We're still only in the boys that have or are mostly famous for survival shows. We haven't even reached the boys you might have heard of. Right. Right. All right. 
So we have Ok Jin Wook, who barely counts also because he was in Super 5. So the, for the people who don't know what Super 5 is, mm -hmm. it is a trot reality show Yep, that had like like not trot singers competing to get into a trot group. If you look from this poster, uh, Jin Wook is the kid in the middle with the purple hair. Great. Uh -huh. uh, if you look to his left, you see MJ from Astro. Yep. And if you look to his right, you see Hui from Pentagon. <laughs> yep, they're also there. That's the world we live in. Yep. Because Hui has not stopped doing survival shows He, he in just years. won't stop. He can't. He's, so he can't. that was like a one song group that did like a trot comeback. Uh-huh. Barely counts, but I wanted to put him in here because he was in Cherry Blossoms After Winter. It's just the fact that we keep seeing these celebrities come in and out. And, like, also, I want to point out that other than one person who we'll get to, none of these people have come out as any form of queer. Right. That is also a thing I have to mention because yes. either for the fact of, like, safety issues in South Korea or anything else, they are willing to do these shows but either not willing to come out or they are not gay and just also doing this is also a cash project. Uh -huh. Not that there's anything inherently wrong with a cash project. You got to pay your bills. That's but still, considering it's how just a, a thing yeah. to mention. Considering how new goo a lot of these um, kids are, norm and either from new goo Cape Cop groups or literally having just been on a survival show. Yeah. It's like they're doing it as a cash project, most yeah, of these absolutely. people. Absolutely. Because the other thing with these shows is that these are not full dramas. Most of these shows they're are web like dramas. web dramas and they're also like eight episodes and they're also like only a half hour per episode. Right. Because we also haven't even gotten to the big BLs that have come out recently. No, we'll get there right. eventually, but it'll take we a little bit. We got the, got the big boy. We got the big boy. There he is. Big boy. We love him. Yes. So Kim ji Woon, we love him. Yes. Uh, he, previous to his ZB1 Voice Planet appearance, was in... INX and 18, two K pop groups that went absolutely nowhere. Very new goo, very short lived K pop groups. And then he does Kissable Lips and Roommates of Ponduk 304, which is, again, this is another example of getting one partner uh -huh. and you do multiple shows <laughs> you with that do partner. Multiple, yep. Here he is. These are two different. There he is. He there was he is. the partner of Disqualified Kid from Produce Act. Which is actually crazy. <laughs> like, Wild. It's a crazy connection to have. Wild. And then he goes on Boys Planet, gets in eighth place, Go get, now is in ZB1. Yep. So who knows and if he'll do a BL again? Who's to say? Well, then he was in that Holland video, but that was he while was, he was He on. was. I, he probably filmed that before, and he's also before. barely in that Holland video. Fair enough, but still, it, it was used for promotion. He is at least acquaintances with Holland. With Holland? Yes. yes. So now we've left the 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 survival show aspect. We have Park So Ham. Park So Ham was in K and K. After leaving K and K, well, no, while he was in K, was Bessie's in Bessie's he was, was that was pre debut pre K and pre, K pre K and K pre debut yes. K and K. He is in Bessie's Excuse Me, where he's the guy in the front and the other guy's the guy in the back. It's a lot, uh -huh. but like implied gay. Yes. Then is in K and K. Does the whole K and K thing. Uh -huh. leaves K and K and then gets on Semantic Error. Semantic Error blows up. Yes. Semantic Error massive success. Semantic Error also one of those web dramas slightly longer I believe, but uh -huh. absolutely a delight. I love Semantic Error. But he also does another one of goes into the Yeah, military. that and I was going to say he then does one of these other common trends where it's to do a BL go to the military. Leave. Yes. Do a BL leave immediately. It's fine. He had nothing. Like he could have rode this out, but I think he was also at military age. He was. He, he was. Go. Yeah, he had to go to the military at that point. But so he unfortunately did not see a lot of the like career success that um. I mean, J -Chan from Don Kiss sure. got, but yes, not that I'm not sure where that career because he wasn't in K and K anymore, and I don't know if he wants to do solo stuff. Well, I don't think but he would have been a singer, but he probably would have done more variety more types. Acting. Yeah. And acting and then also variety stuff. Because Jay Chan also does, like, radio hosting and variety shows and stuff, Yo, too. Oh, yeah. This, so. this could have set him up. Yeah. So next we have Park Jay Chan. There he is. Who was in pre-this show Dong Kiz. Then this show happens. Rebranded. You blow up in success. Rebrand as DKZ. Uh -huh. I will say DKZ. Semantic Air in DKZ is the is I think what people want to happen when you do these kind of shows. Yes. Because 
One, Donkiz was nobody. Yep. Nobody before this show. This show happens, they rebrand, and then they actually do something with the rebrand. Yes. The rebrand works. The rebrand puts out better music. Not that Donkiz was terrible. Donkiz was fine. But I think that they capitalized on the uh, success of the show. And I think that- As opposed to the, a lot of people, yeah. which just sort of seemed like they kind of let it flounder. And I think the semantic error DKZ like popularity boost is kind of what- initiated drive this. i think yeah i think it's one of the big initiating factors of why so many other new goo k-pop yeah boys are way. doing this now i think they would have done it like a lot of them would have done this yeah. anyway but i think a lot of people are now seeing this as like oh this actually works and is a way it's like a thing that could happen actually for like i think big the main success. thing is also that if you put out especially a good show it works because a lot of the shows are fine they're very short they don't really do much as opposed to like a semantic error which has a very good story and like a very like actually very like plot. nice like rude like very, very sweet good, like very good characters like they're characters oh, you absolutely. can root for too yeah yeah and like told a complete story as opposed to kind of a mishmashed like just sort of putting something out there in eight episodes which i think some of these shows fall into the trap of because yeah you don't have that much time you only kind of have maybe the the equivalent of like two film lengths right and you can't do terribly much with that unlike a lot of the thai shows which are like 12 episodes they're longer you have more you have more time uh what else we got so next is june from ace so june from ace uh a thing I want to note about Ace, Ace did one of the songs, and it's honestly one of my favorite Ace songs. They had already done a um, OST for Light on Me before June was in Tinted With You. Tinted With You is not a good show. It's a, bad, it's a bad show. Bad yeah. show. Bad show. But he was in this show, and uh, another thing, another distinction you can make between some of these shows is what i call the bls that like go for it uh -huh. and the bls that don't and you can really tell by like the affection level some of these shows have because uh -huh. in some of them they are allowed to like actually you know treat that relationship like you would a straight relationship which is like they kiss right. they do everything BLs else where like, you kiss are... a man versus where you do it's not kiss a man that that's one way of saying it uh as you can tell from the poster june went for it uh-huh June uh, also did one of the do a BL go to the military situation. That too. He's not back yet, which I feel like it's been forever. I know. I think it's been like a year and a half, something like that. It's got it to have been. It feels like it's been longer. I don't, I don't know. know. Time is a flat circle. So next we have Qual. Remember Qual was in The Boys? Yep. I've, it's nope. been years. Forgot he was a member of The Boys for a it's very long been time. years. But yes, Qual was in The Boys leaves the boys, and then does Color Rush. And then, after the success of Color Rush, does not come back for Color Rush Season 2. Nope. Which means they have to, like, overhaul that show, because, like, uh, the, so the concept of Color Rush is <laughs> that uh, there is one character, uh, not played by Hual, who uh, just, there's people in this world that just can't see color. Any color. They are color, they are, see, gray. Until they meet, like, essentially their soulmate, who, once they, like, make eye contact, see their face, they can see color. Great. Wonderful. There's drama abounds. I don't know why. Uh -huh. <laughs> but there's drama abounds. And then, how do you make a second season without the soulmate from season one? Yep. It's a lot. But he is in this show. Good for him. I think tried to replicate that success and use it for his solo career... I don't think it worked out as well as he planned. Probably not. All right. So next we have two people. We're going to we're gonna go through them real quick because they're working tandem. So we have uh, Jay Han from Omega X. He's in A Shoulder to Cry On. Mm -hmm. And we have Ye Chan also from Omega X who's in A Shoulder to Cry On. This is Together. also a trend that I uh, rarely happens. But I want to point out because I'm just, these are two people from the same group playing a couple. Yep. That's a new one. It's new. That's that's different. It's got to be weird. Like, it feels like right. it has to be weird. <laughs> like, like even if it's fully professional, there's no feelings involved. Like, that's still your uh -huh. friend or coworker yes. that you've known for years. Omega X now under the company that produced this VL as well. So I guess it was a good time. Uh huh. 
It. Ha- I mean, they they decided to sign with the. I don't know. Man. I don't. Omega X no clue. confuses me. Yeah. Next, we have Zuho from SF9. We're really getting a lot of the heavy hitters. Yeah, we're getting the heavy There's hitters. A lot the of the heavy we hit- go. <laughs> There's a lot of heavy hitters in this. Like you're looking at people that like wanted to revitalize their career. Why Zuho did a BL, I don't know. There is Zuho absolutely no need, need for him to do a BL. I guess he just wanted to for fun. I think he wanted to for the culture. Yeah. I Though guess. Though it is one of the BLs that doesn't go for it, because Zuho does not kiss a man, if that's what anybody was looking for. Uh-huh. Uh, but maybe he just wanted to be an ally? Maybe? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why. He really didn't need to do it, but he did. And, Which, uh, I he mean, did like, good, struck. Like, like, good for, for him, him, though. Happy for him, but also I'm confused for him. Yes, yes. All right. So next we have Jamin from uh, Bay One Seven Three, and he is in Love Class too. I, uh, I believe this is like around the same time. This would have been filmed around the same time that like peak time was happening. It's okay. just a lot, man. This is also the kid that was supposed to be on Boys Fantasy. Right, but then pulls out of that, I think, once Peak Time started As he going should well. have. Yeah, like, thank God for that. that thank was... God for him. Right. This is, Peak Time was a better time for him. Yes. So he is in Love Class 2. Uh, so. <laughs> another boy. Uh-huh. You might not know his name. Yes. Up. So he's in The Seven. Uh, remember the, 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 the K-pop meme going around a couple months ago? Uh, from that the seven song, I got a hundred minute minute. Of- I just, can't. I don't you know even- all the w- the, the words, mumbles, the word that don't sound like words. Yeah, so it's from the what is that song called? Get loose, get loose. It's from the that the break seven song of, the se- of their debut. Song. It's very honestly entirely an English debut good. song. Yeah. I enjoy it. You can't tell it's all in English. No, absolutely not. <laughs> so if you don't know, the seven is entirely Thai. Yes. And they make songs in English. Yep. And so before he was in the seven, he would, this this sort of falls in line with your Santa yacht situation. He was in a show called Secret Crush on You. That show is cringe incarnate. Just putting it out there if you're considering watching any of these shows. It is cringe incarnate. I also would like to say, I I hate the poster for that too right it's like why it is why exactly would you make this you... design choice oh no the design with the, he- choice with is the heads like the heads are weird it's a lot it's also v- the show's got a lot of heart but that's all i can say <laughs> um so uh yay he is very sweet in that show he is probably the least cringe person but also he's in couple like number three or four Oof. on the list of couples in that show oof yeah. So, uh, yay for him being in the seven. Good for Hooray. him. Hooray. This is young Jay from BAP. Mm-hmm. I did not know that th- that he was in a BL until I started doing research for this. Lovely. Because this is slightly older. Uh, he's also, he, this is post BAP, post him being a soloist. And I think this is when we start to get into that, like, second part, which is, um... You are an older K-pop idol, so you're going to use it to try to, like, be, come relevant again. Right, right. One of those situations. Yeah. Who's to say? So he's in Spring and, uh, Love in Spring. I've literally never heard of anyone speak on this show. Cool, cool, cool. I don't know anything about this show. I had to make sure it was a real BL, (laughs) to be honest. (laughs) If I'm wrong that it is a BL, because I've never seen it nor seen any, but the, the tags on my drama list say it's a BL, so I don't know. Yeah. All right. Leo from Vix. Again, another one which is an older idol, like, bringing this in. He's in Happy Ending Romance, a very confusing show that I did not like. Uh-huh. The amount of people, my God. Oof. The amount of people. So this is also Hyuk from Vix. He's the replacement for Hual in Color Rush 2. Infinitely worse. Very Color con- Rush 2 is infinitely very worse. Very confusing all around for Color Rush 2. I don't know why two. you'd make a Color Rush 2 if you don't have the soulmate. Right? It's very confusing. It's weird. It's very weird. Next we have uh, Gung Chan from B1A4. This is current B one A four. Everybody, I don't know if it's B one A two or it's just B1A4, A three. Yeah, 
I don't know what configuration of their blood types we're at right now, but yep. we're at something. And so he was in Unintentional Love Story. Mind you, some of these shows have all come out within like the past two years. Like a bunch of, like Color Rush 2 I think was last year. Unintentional Love Story was this year. Uh, I think Love in Spring was last year. So many of these shows are just coming out right now. Uh-huh. Love Class 2 just started airing like a week ago. Like, it's it's crazy, man. So, next. <laughs> There's always more people that I'm just... I remember it's making like this and I forget that they're here. And it's a surprise, almost. You know. Uh, next, we have uh, Sung Jaehyun. He's FT Island's guitarist? Second guitarist, yeah. Second guitarist. No uh, longer um, in FT Island, though. No, has left at this point, because FT Island only needs three people, obviously. Yep. Uh, and he's an Oh My Assistant. Didn't even know he acted. My god. I think that's why he left. It's because he wanted to become an actor. <laughs> and then he did Oh My Assistant. Yeah, um, yep. Another show I haven't seen. Don't ask. So Holland. Holland is the only person in this whole list of people who is actually out. He is gay. We've got he one like, out of like one out of the 40 plus people on this PowerPoint. Yes. He is a soloist. He just had a song. Jiwoong was in the video. Good for him. Good for him. Uh-huh. Uh, cannot speak to the quality of his music. Yep. I'm not a biggest fan, but that's also just no, me. No. He was in Ocean Likes Me. Yes, he was in Ocean's... Ocean Likes Me. I keep calling it Ocean's Like Me. <laughs> I don't know how the ocean is like me, but it's fine. Yep. Uh, I also don't know how the ocean's like... I don't ocean know. It's a very likes, weird yeah, title. Okay, it's very... Yep. No matter which way you put that, it's a very Doesn't weird title, sense. but yes. Fine. He is one of the only out people in this whole industry, to be honest. Yep, yep. There's very few. So, good for Holland. We support. So, now we have another member of K&K, because you'll also find a lot of the same groups appear a lot on these, especially from now on. Uh-huh. So, Lee Dongwon from K&K is in Happy Merry Ending. Again, also, I also want to point out that so many of these posters for these Korean BLs are very bad. Uh-huh. Why is there so much dead space in this poster? There's it's so terrible. much, like, blank space. I also, like, it's, you'll see it for a bunch of these shows that there's so much dead space. Not good. Not a good look. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. So. Oh, yeah. This is, yep. uh, Chung Sun Moon. He's in the man BLK. I had never heard of the man BLK yep. as a group. Uh, however. I think I, I had vaguely has, known of their existence, but that was I had known it. of their existence as like an OST group. I didn't realize that they were like a K-pop thing. But they were. They had like two comebacks. Um, the man BLK was at 1.10 people. They're on this. They're on here at least six times. Yep. Possibly eight. I don't remember exactly, but they are here six to eight times with different people from this group. So, uh, this guy was in Mr. Heart. Uh, you'll find that our other guy was uh, one of the kids from Produce X. Ugh, I, I forgot I put them all together again. Uh-huh. So, Almsung from The Man BLK was in Behind Cut. Go Woo Jin from The Man BLK was in Light On Me. <laughs> Choi Chang Yi was also in Light on Me as one of the minor characters. It's insane how many people from the man BLK. There's more, don't worry, you'll see more of them. Oh boy. But there's a lot of them. Inso from My Name was in Wish You Your Melody from My Heart. That's a title. Oh man. And Nobleman <laughs> Ryu's Wedding. Yeah, Wish You Your Melody from My Heart is the full title. All of right. That. <laughs> yeah. It's also not very good. I found it very mediocre. Uh, Lee Sang from In Fact was in Wish You Your Melody from My Heart. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> I didn't even know. Th- I, I didn't even, even know this kid I don't was in a K pop group. What group this? I've never heard of this group in my life. If they were. So Yo Hyung Woo was in A26. I don't know who A26 is. Yep. But I found out. Because he's the kid. He is June's co-star. Uh-huh. Well, apparently they were actually, like, they were, I think they debuted, like, two years ago, to be honest. 
but yes, it it was a lot, man. Oh boy. It's just a lot. It's a man. lot. There's just so much. There's so many boys. We still got more boys, Kayla. So many, there's still there's more still boys. Still more boys. I don't even know what this group is. Bum June. That's a from band. Tuesday, I think that's a, a band. band. Is also in b- behind. Oh, this is called behind cut. I'm sorry. This is the wrong title, but it's called behind cut. Uh, Hojin also from Two Z is in behind cut and O and O boarding house. I oh, like the amount of these house. that are just called O exclamation point something because we uh-huh. also had O oh, my assistant before. Right. Now we have O boarding house. Also, this isn't just to show you the amount of different like idols in these shows. There are shows that don't have idols in them that come out too. This is just to show you the sheer amount of Korean BLs you could watch. It's a pipeline. There's an insane number. It's a pipeline. And they all come out within the last like three years, three to four years. It's crazy. Uh, and there's more. Because, like, there's a bunch, like, a lot of my favorites aren't even on here. So next we have Yo Sung from WoW. Worse WoW. It's uh, Worse. Wizards of the World WoW. Half a band WoW. Not the WoW we like. Yes. Band WoW. So he's in The Director Who Buys Me Dinner. Okay, the titles are, like, getting worse the longer we go. Somehow the titles get worse if you get into more new goo groups. Uh-huh. Don't worry about it. Uh, We have June Q from my name who's in individual circumstances all right that's a title that's a title (laughs) all right so that's all of the bls that have come out so far that i could find and that i deemed worthy mind you we're not even talking about like other bls that i that like exist and are korean bls and are things that are like good. These are only for example, ones that have to involve a K-pop idol. But they're in only some the way. ones that involve K-pop idols. Right. Because like I could give you like I loved uh what's it called? I loved my dating sim. That's that does not include an idol in it. That's not it's not anything you need to concern yourself with. Yep. Like there's so many other Korean BLs that like you that I could uh put out there they just do not they do not fulfill the one criteria which is that they need to have a k-pop idol in it yeah there's like to my star that also doesn't have a k-pop idol in it there's like a bunch more that are coming out that don't have a k-pop idol in it like it's just i don't know man there's too many it's a it's a it's a lot growing industry and i don't you make me dance that doesn't have an idol in it it's a trend with K-pop idols, though. And it's also a trend without K-pop idols. They also have Blooming. You got so many options, man. And it's... It's kind of exhausting. And then, and then if I bring in the Thai idols into it, because half of those people think they oh, can yeah. sing. It's a, And then the Japanese? Uh-huh. Oh, God. The Taiwanese? Oh, God. And then the Chinese ones that only kind of count. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which are as gay as they can be for being in China, which is not gay. Hey, at all, I finished. But... I finished. Stay with me. They managed to get like little little uh, cheek kisses in there. Oh, uh, that's something. That's something. You do what you can with the with the restrictions put in place. Yep. By communism. Yep. Yep. By anti-gay communism. All right. So now we have the future BLs. These are just shows that I know are coming out decently soon. So they're idols who played gay characters in BLs that are not out yet. Uh-huh. Let's talk about this one, because this is the entire group of only one of. The entire group is having to be all. Of which is- Two of them are playing the, the main couple here, obviously, but, like, the rest of them are playing all the minor characters. It does feel very on brand for only one of. It to does. To do this. Uh, it's called Bump Up Business. That title, too. Uh-huh. A, 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 a question. Uh, it is essentially- from the description, which it actually does have a description, unlike the rest of these, it is about so one of the only one of members is playing a new up and coming idol, and the other one is playing like a veteran washed up idol, and then it's about their bickering and the fact that they have to like make up a pretend relationship. I don't know, it's confusing, but that is what that show's about, and the fact that it's like the entire group of only one of 
is involved in it feels right. very much like that is that they know what they're doing. It's very everything weird. about only one of makes me think that they know what they're doing uh-huh. with their marketing tactic. Yes, yes. And you know, it's a lot. Not that there's anything inherently wrong with it, more so than anybody else. They just all sort of seem like they are. They know what what this industry looks like. Uh huh. All right. So then we have Yoon Jun Jun Wan, also from the man BLP, BLK. He's going to be an eccentric romance. Uh, also, who's going to be an eccentric romance? Uh, Gun Yu from Just Be. Oh, so he's man. also going to be in that and Love is Like a Cat. And Gun Yu from uh, Just Be was also in Island. I uh-huh. don't know who else was in Island. Uh, JM from Just Be, who's also gonna be in Love is Like a oh, Cat. Oh, man. Okay, I also another. don't know how Love is Like a Cat. I don't know what that means. I, I hope it doesn't have to do with, like, actual cats, cat boy in any way, because we've seen that to say? in a drama before, and it's not the best. No. I mean, weirdly, what is that show called? I think it's, like, Choco and Milky is not bad, weirdly. Uh Uh-huh. They're human, and they're, like, reincarnations of cats, but, like, it was not terrible. But, yeah, that's the- that's everybody I know of, and there could be more. Knowing my luck, tomorrow they're gonna announce that, like, Like I don't know- Like, someone really big is gonna do one, (laughs) yeah. Well, there was rumors that, like, Jaehyun of NCT was gonna do one, and I'm like, what? They would never allow that, (laughs) because- That would be insane. They actually would never allow him to do that. (laughs) And yet the rumor was like going around for way too long that that was happening. Like nothing would surprise me anymore, man. Everything feels like it could happen at this point. Uh Uh-huh. Like what? It it just feels like. I don't know. What uh, so I'm I'm in this. I'm too into this. What do you think what what do you think this says about this industry, Kayla? I don't know. Because also there we like debated for a while is like, well, what does we what do we do with Boys Planet in terms of all of this? Because also that feels like that's not helping the K pop no. to the L pipeline in any way. It's like not to, it's not directly on. related, but it's like it's tangentially kind of involved with this entire situation. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it also feels like there's again. I think that this is just a response to like I feel like this is just people giving the people exactly what they asked for, right? Because I go back to thinking about like. Second gen, third gen K-pop, like our tw- like conversations being had in like 2015, uh-huh. and like thinking about like the dumb games they would play on variety shows, and like the paper kiss situation game, and like right, all and of they've that been other doing nonsense. that shit since the second gen, like, and they've been doing second that since the second gen. People have always been like, oh well, this and that, and like making speculations and all that other stuff, and this just feels like a response to that. Yeah. Just being like, well, if they're gonna say it anyway, might as well make some cash. It's like, yeah, now and like, like South Korea has like evolved to the point where it's like, well, we might as well profit off of it, I guess. And like, in a weird way, does this show tolerance? But also in a weird way, it feels like it's not real tolerance. Cause yeah. Because it's like, it, I don't I have complicated feelings about it because I can't say it's inherently wrong. Right, because part of it is, like, representation is good, but also it's, like, the entire background to, like, how we're getting in, like, representation. Like, I don't know if that's inherently good if everyone is just using it as a cash grab because they know it's a thing that they can profit off of. Like, because in that way, it's not actual tolerance we're use we're exploiting it for money like and it's yeah we're exploiting an already exploited group for money which is not the greatest but and then at the same time it's like well the neither the people making it nor the audience possibly are people in that demographic because of how much of this audience is straight women right and yet so many of these actors are probably 
or will never admit it or can't or whatever are not out in any capacity. So it's like that added thing of like, well, so this isn't being mated for any of the community that it's representing. And it's like, yeah. that adds a whole other layer to everything. And it's like, well, what do, what do we do? Yeah, it's, um, it's a lot. <laughs> It's a is, it's a lot it's a trend that's happening in K-pop. Um who's to say if it's good or not? I know. It's just one of those where I'm like not everything I say is going to sound like I'm rambling and also it's going to be like just I don't know. The answer is I don't know. Yeah. That's I don't where know we're if at. it's right, I don't know if it's wrong, I don't because then you get into, like, bigger issues of, like, is BL inherently, like, problematic? And yes, in a way it is, but also it's just questions that have been asked for decades. Right. And, like, if you think you have the right answer, sure, you're the one that got the right answer in the decades of this question. Uh-huh. It's a lot. It's a lot. It really is a lot. I don't know how to end this, man. Yeah. Yeah. What like it's gonna be something we continue to like think about and like yep. I don't I think we're in the middle of the peak right and I don't know where the what the fall or if there is fallout or right. if it's just like a trend that because like, I wonder if continues at, to happen yeah because I wonder if at some point like these K-pop companies realize there's like diminishing returns or something on this or like. Or it's, or once is, it's like no longer profitable it's like just gonna not happen anymore like i don't or know is it one of those things where it like there isn't really like what are it just continues to be maybe a thing that doesn't like give you like dkz popularity right but like any little bit is probably better than like no, where they just keep doing it but it right. doesn't become to this scale right they don't come or to it just continues it on to, to this, this scale yeah. who's to say because like i don't know if there's like diminishing returns at per se maybe for the group but like give them like what three weeks off to go film this there's nothing like you know uh -huh. too terrible about that right. so i don't know what the it could just be something that just is now just a part of this industry. Because, again, it, one, it is something inherently unique to boy groups because yep. girl groups aren't out here doing GLs because those no. don't exist. In, they've only now only just started really being a thing in, like, Thailand. They were a, they're, like, a thing kind of in Japan, I think. Uh-huh. But they're not re – like, they're only starting to appear more mainstream Lee. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that there are really any in Korea that I've heard about. There is a handful of musicals that are, but that's an entirely but different yeah, but media. Like, yeah, yeah. But there's like a handful of musicals that are gay. Like yeah. musicals are like a very different format. Because if but we like, also get into that, then that's like an entire other situation. Yeah. If then I would have had to do like if you want to say people have played gay in musical, we're adding like Neil and uh, Ren because they were all in uh, what is that show? Something about Jamie? Like, what is that show called? Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I think that's the name, something about Jamie. There's something yeah, about Jamie, something yeah. About, yeah, and that that had, like, five different actors playing. I think MJ was in that, too. Like, there's yes. a lot of people that were in that. Yes, yes. But, like, just in terms of, like, on-film BL, or GLs don't, aren't, are non-existent. That's not a thing, that's not a demographic that girl groups have to hit. Right. But, like, this is sort of an avenue that, like... It feels like we're just going to keep seeing. I know. And it's very interesting to me because if you told me like five years ago this is where we'd end up, I wouldn't believe you. It's really been in like the last five, four or five years. Yeah. That this has sort of been a thing. Yeah. And it's insane how much it's grown. It's crazy. <laughs> so fast. I think it's just seeing a market, seeing a niche and like... It's exploded in Korea, man. They have to be making money on them. They're making, like, one a month. Oh, definitely. Or releasing one a month, at yes. least. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. You go on, like, uh, it's so many, man. And then, like, even then, also a bunch of, like, people that are watching the Korean ones are then going and watching the Thai ones. And then, like, people like Santa and Yacht being in these boys' fantasy show. Uh -huh. then that just adds into the whole, uh, what's it called? To the whole mythos of, like, well, maybe people are going to start watching Thai BLs, and it's a whole thing. 
Uh-huh. Like, I've seen an absolute explosion of, like, Thai dramas recently and, like, Thai BLs in, like, more of a K-pop sphere that there's, like, so many on things like Vicky, which used to only be, like, K-dramas. Uh-huh. Now it's from, like, all over the world. It's just a lot, right, man. And right. I think it's just causing such an expansion of what people are watching and what people like to watch. Yeah. I don't know what it says, and I don't know if it's a trend and then it'll go away, or if it's a thing that's just, like, here to stay, but don't know. Right, because just, there's- We're just a- saying things. Because, I mean, there's- it also seems like recently there's an increase in- the interest in BLs in, like, the Western market, too, with things like Heartstopper and then Red, White, Royal Blue getting, like, made into adaptations and stuff. And there's, like, a bunch more on the way. Yeah, and, like, so that, like, so who's to say if this is just, like, a generic, like, trend in media that it's, like, I don't think it'll ever go away fully because it is kind of, like, a representation thing that is nice and that yes. I think people, that is kind of needed, but I don't know if it'll, like, stay as relevant as it is currently. Yeah. I, it is just a very interesting thing that we've been seeing. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a it's an interesting change. We'll see yeah. if it sticks around. And I honestly, I wouldn't be like now that I'm upset that it sticks around. I watch all of these shows, man. Uh huh. I've seen like ha- I've seen most of the shows on this list, and it's just they're mostly good. Uh huh. I do think we are reaching an oversaturation in the market where a bunch of them are mediocre to kind of bad. But that's not because they're gay. That's just because we're making. We're trying to make, like, 50 shows a year with the same, like, four recycled plots. Like, Uh we can calm it down a little bit. Quality over quantity, people. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yep, that's the K-pop to BL pipeline, everyone. Another episode where we have no answers. No answer. Just more questions. Only discussion. (laughs) Just questions. Only questions. Maybe you'll come up with the answers, man. Who's to say? Um, if anyone wants to give their opinions in the comments, feel free, I guess. Um, Please. But yes, we are available on all major podcasting platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We also have a YouTube channel where we post all of our episodes. This episode has a very nice, lovely, fun PowerPoint to go with it. If you would like to see it, it's very cute. Um, and yeah, and sometimes we post clip videos there as well. Um, but... We will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.